Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The happy but strange marriage of Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. One of the most unifying moments in English history was a marriage that brought the Wars of the Roses to an end. Henry VII, who had just defeated Richard III at the Battle of Bosworth Field, married Elizabeth of York, and with this united the House of Lancaster and the House of York in matrimony, bringing England together. But was their marriage happy, and was it positive, considering that Henry and Elizabeth were both on two warring sides and were considered enemies? But what is the story behind their marriage? And it was claimed that after Elizabeth's death, Henry VII was distraught at the loss of his beautiful wife. When Elizabeth of York, the eldest child of King Edward IV, was just five years old, her future husband, Henry Tudor, was living in exile as her father had regained the throne. Henry Tudor, the Earl of Richmond, believed he would be possibly executed by the Yorkist King Edward, and he spent 14 years in Brittany evading him. Edward IV may have made some attempts to have him return to England for his execution, or even summon him to England to reconcile with him. But there was nothing further in the minds than a marriage match between someone from the House of York and the House of Lancaster. There was a possibility of a betrothal of Elizabeth of York to the, the Dauphin of France, but this was broken off in 1482. Edward may have considered marrying Elizabeth to Henry Tudor, but he never got the chance. So as Edward IV died, and Elizabeth was then sent to sanctuary by her mother, Elizabeth Woodville. Edward's son, Edward V, was sent to the Tower of London and looked after by his nephew, Richard III, but then disappeared in the Princes of the Tower mystery. As Richard III then seized the throne, Elizabeth and her siblings were declared illegitimate, and this was proclaimed by Parliament, and her mother, Elizabeth Woodville, conspired with Henry Tudor's mother, to have the pair betrothed to each other, despite Elizabeth's uncle who was on the throne. Henry agreed to marry Elizabeth on Christmas Day 1483, and shortly after made a failed attempt to invade England. In 1485, a more successful attempt occurred, and following Richard III's slaying at the Battle of Bosworth Field, Henry Tudor was proclaimed King Henry VII, the King of England. He then went forward with his promise to marry Elizabeth after he was crowned, and there was some delay, as he honoured the agreement to marry Elizabeth. During this time, she was staying with Henry's mother, and one of the first things that Henry VII did was to reinstate Elizabeth's legitimacy, and this then went through, as did the Pope's permission for the marriage match. Henry VII and Elizabeth were then married at Westminster, and Elizabeth was known for her beauty, having fair hair and pale skin, and was described as an English rose. Henry VII wasn't known for his looks, but together the pair seemed a good couple, and Elizabeth quickly fell pregnant. Their first child was born, and named Arthur, on the 20th of September 1486, and many believed she was pregnant at her time of marriage, or that Arthur was premature. It's not known how many pregnancies Elizabeth had in total, but she had seven children, with only four living past infancy. The pair seemed to have a rather affectionate relationship despite their shocking marriage. They lived closely and never left each other for too long until Henry put down a rebellion whilst Elizabeth was pregnant. He wrote affectionately of her and Henry was called by her the most serene lord, the king, our husband. There was also poetry written from Elizabeth when she spoke of her joy and happiness. But there is also an account where Henry VII and Elizabeth had an agreement and disagreement regarding copies of letters from Catherine of Aragon to her parents. It's believed, though, that Henry and Elizabeth wished to set a good example for their children on how to have a happy marriage. However, this is something their second son, the prince who became Henry VIII, would not heed to with his six wives. Also, three of them also defied marriage protocol to marry for love at three points. It's believed that Elizabeth may have clashed with her mother-in-law, Margaret Beaufort, at times, as Margaret, Henry's mother, sought to try and claim favour and power for herself. Living in close quarters with her mother-in-law may have also caused clashes, but the two did unite against Henry's proposal for marrying their daughter Margaret off. But one of the most tragic moments the pair had to deal with in their marriage was on the 4th of April, 1502, when the pair awoke to the news that their eldest son, 
and Henry's heir, Arthur Tudor, had passed away at Ludlow Castle. This caused chaos as Arthur had been married to Catherine of Aragon, and now Henry VII was possibly faced with having to pay back half her dowry. The loss caused great pain for both of them, and Henry and Elizabeth shared the news together and grieved together. They took comfort in each other, and Henry's grief was great, and Elizabeth helped her husband confront his feelings about the news. She stayed strong for Henry VII, who broke, and then mourned her eldest son in private in her chambers. It was said, when his grace understood the sorrowful heavy tidings, he sent for the queen, saying that he and his queen would take the painful sorrows together. After that, she was come, and saw the king her lord, and that natural and painful sorrow, as I have heard say, she, with full great and constant comfortable words, besought his grace that he would first, after God, remember the weal of his own noble person, the comfort of his realm, and of her. She then said that my lady, his mother, had never no more children but him only, and that God by his grace had even preserved him, and brought him where that he was. Over that, how that God had left him yet a fair prince, two fair princesses, and that God is where he was, and we are both young enough, and that the prudence and wisdom of his grace sprung all over Christendom, so that it should please him to take the accordings thereunto. Then the king thanked her of her good comfort. After that she was departed, and come to her own chamber. Natural and motherly remembrance of that great loss smote her so sorrowful to the heart, that those that were about her were fain to send for the king to comfort her. Then his grace of true, gentle, faithful love in good haste came and relieved her, and showed her how wise counsel she had given him before, and he for his part would thank God for his son, and would she should in do in likewise. There was more than just an agreement to marry between the two. The royal couple genuinely, seemingly loved each other. Elizabeth fell pregnant within a few months of Arthur's death and went into confinement in the Tower of London in early 1503. But the baby was premature. The labour was difficult for the Queen and she became feverish after. Henry was pacing nervously outside of the chambers and he found out his Queen was ill and he fetched his doctors to help. The baby was born a girl on the 2nd of February 1503 and was named Catherine, after her sister-in-law, but died eight days later. Elizabeth's fever got worse, and shortly after the birth, on the 11th of February 1503, Elizabeth died, the day after Catherine, her daughter, on her 37th birthday. Henry VII's reaction to his wife's death showed how strong he felt about her and how he loved her. He organised a huge, lavish funeral for England's Queen and left the arrangements in his mother's hands. He left for Richmond Palace and when he reached his private chamber he broke down and collapsed with upset. Henry was a private and reserved man who rarely displayed his emotions in public, but his attendants were shocked by the outpouring of grief. He then got rid of the attendants and grieved himself, but he did get ill himself, and it was his mother who nursed him back to health, and also who helped him deal with his hurt. But after Elizabeth's death, Henry did consider marrying again to have more children for the Tudor dynasty. He considered marrying Joanna of Naples, and negotiations did occur before they broke off, and also Joanna of Castile. He may have also considered marrying his son's widow, Catherine of Aragon, so he did not have to pay back her dowry. But all of this talk may have been a reaction to the heartbreak of Elizabeth's death. Following her death, court became a tougher place, as did Henry VII, and she was mourned deeply, and he refused to go to the Tower of London and stay there for the rest of his life. Such was the heartbreak caused by Elizabeth's death. Henry VII lived for six years following his wife's passing, but her loss contributed to his personality and his health. He was ill a number of times and died on the 21st of April 1509, and he was buried alongside his beloved wife Elizabeth of York. Their marriage was one which was considered unconventional at the time, and two leading figures in the Wars of the Roses from warring households marrying to unite England. They were the mother and father of the Tudor dynasty, the ruling family that remains in history, as the most brutal and savage period of time England has ever seen. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.